the the time at which the heating starts that's theta degrees so for the for the first part like when heat is applied the object will in the temperature of the object will increase until it reaches at 100 degrees and there when it reaches at 100 degrees so this is when it starts boiling you see this is when it starts boiling and then the temperature will remain constant because this is when the change of phase happens so this is when the change of phase happens so the temperature will remain constant so when you're asked to calculate this question when you're asked to solve this question what you'll have to do is you'll have to plot a graph so your line will start from here because this is the point when the heating starts and the temperature starts increasing until it reaches here and at this point the water starts to boil so the temperature should remain constant for this point of time now here they are asking you describe in terms of energy changes describe in terms of energy changes the molecular behavior of water and steam during the heating process so you see they are asking you in terms of energy changes the molecular behavior of water and the molecular behavior of steam so you see here if you look here, the temperature is increasing, right? Whenever there is an increase in temperature, that means the kinetic energy is increasing. You will have to revisit the definition of kinetic energy, sorry, temperature, and temperature is the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So here, as the temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy is increasing. But at this point, there is a phase change happening. When there is a phase change happening, the temperature remains constant. It's the potential energy that's, incre that's increasing. So from theta to 100, the kinetic energy is increasing. From 100 onwards, the potential energy is increasing. Because after 100, at this point, the energy is used in breaking the bonds. Now, I think this was the question that I was asked to go over. Uh, mathematical part. So I'm going to go over and try to focus on this. Thermal energy is supplied to water in the pan for 10 minutes at a constant rate of 400 watt. The thermal capacity of the pan is negligible. Deduce that the total energy supplied in 10 minutes is 2.4 times 10 raised to the power 5 joules. Now, they want you to calculate the total energy. You know that energy is power times time. Energy is power multiplied by time. You know the power here. The power here is 400 watts. The power is 400 watts. 400 watts means 400 joules per second. This means 400 joules per second. And the time is 10 minutes. So 10 minutes is 10 times 60 because you have to convert time in seconds. So this will be 10 times 60, which will be 600 seconds. And when you multiply them, you get this answer. So you get 2.4 times 10 raised to the power five joules. That was the first part of the question. The first part of the question, they simply asked you to calculate the total energy. And the total energy supplied in 10 minutes. You will have to use the formula Energy is power times time. Power here is 400 watts, which is 400 joules per second, and time you'll have to convert in seconds. Next, next part of the question was, estimate, using the data below, estimate the mass of water turned into steam as a result of the heating process. Which heating process? As a result of this heating process. So, they're asking you how much mass of water turned into steam as a result of this heating process. So this much heat you supplied. And the question is how much or calculate the mass of water turned into steam. So let's try to understand. Here the initial temperature of water is 20 degrees. So we need to find out how much heat energy is required to change the temperature of water from 20 to 100 degrees. Because when you're heating, let's say when you're heating from 20 to 100 degrees, here you see this is 20 to 100 degree. This is MC delta T. 
So use the formula MC delta T. Mass is 0.3, mass is 0.3. Specific heat capacity is 4,200. So this is 4,200. And change in temperature, so from 20 to 100. So the change in temperature is 80. That gives you 100800 joules. So that's the heat energy required to change the temperature of water from 20 to 100. Now, how much heat energy are you supplying? You're supplying this much amount of heat energy. So the remaining heat energy will be used to change water to steam. So that will be used to convert to steam. So uh, the amount of heat energy remaining is 240000 minus this one that we have got 100800. And that gives you 139200. And that is the heat energy supplied here. You can think about this part. And this part is M times L. So if you do mass times the latent heat, that should give you 139200. And from there, you could calculate the mass. And the mass, you get approximately 60 grams. So this is how you solve the question. They simply said, how much mass of water turned into steam uh, using this heating process? So this was the total amount of heat energy supplied. I first found out how much heat energy was required to change water from 20 degrees to 80, 20 degrees to 100 degrees. And I got this number. I subtracted this from this number because this is the total amount of heat energy supplied. And you get this much amount of heat energy that is 139,200. You divide that by the latent heat and the latent heat is given 2.3 times uh, latent heat of repression 2.3 times 10 raised to the power six, and you get 60 grams as the mass. Now, the last part of the question was, suggest one reason or explain why this is an estimate. Of course, this is an estimate because we are not taking account, we are not taking into account the heat loss to the surrounding. There must be some heat lost to the surrounding. So this is how you solve this question. Uh, then there was one more question here, you see. Uh, this question is about thermal physics. Explain why when a liquid evaporates, uh, the liquid cools unless thermal energy is supplied. So when, when a liquid evaporates, the liquid cools. When a liquid evaporates, the more energetic particles, they leave the surface. Because let's say uh, when evaporation is happening, the more energetic ones, they leave the surface. So that means the mean kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy of the remaining particles decreases. You see, this means the mean kinetic energy of the remaining molecules decreases. And temperature is the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So because the more energetic molecules they have left, the remaining kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy of the remaining particles decreases and temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles. And that is why the average kinetic energy decreases. So the temperature decreases. You had one more here. State two factors that cause an increase in the rate of evaporation. So what are the factors that cause increase in the rate of evaporation. So you have the larger surface area. If the surface area is more, your evaporation is going to be more. If the temperature is more, your evaporation is going to be more or rate of evaporation is going to be more. They only ask two, but you could also write one more, the lower vapor pressure. If the vapor pressure is, is low, in that case, the rate of evaporation will be more. Uh, now here, here you are given some data. If you look here, some data for ice and water are given below. And this is a specific heat capacity of ice, a specific heat capacity of water, and specific latent heat of fusion of ice. You are given a mass of 350 gram of water at 25 degrees is placed in a refrigerator that extracts thermal energy at the rate of 86 watt. 
calculate the time taken for the water to become ice at negative five degrees. So you see, you have water, you have water, technically this is 350 grams of water. 350 grams of water is at 25 degrees. So first this water needs to be cooled to water at zero degrees. So this water at zero degrees and same 350 grams of water at zero degrees. And then this water at zero degrees need to be converted into ice at zero degrees. So ice at zero degrees. And then this ice needs to be converted into ice at negative five degrees at negative five degrees. So you see, we are involving one step here. One step is change of, uh, the changing the temperature of 350 grams of water from 25 degree to zero degree. So we will use MC delta T to calculate how much heat is extracted to change 350 grams of water at 25 degrees to 350 grams of water at zero degrees. Then once you have 350 grams of water at zero degrees, you need to find out how much heat energy is extracted to change 350 grams of water at zero degrees to 350 grams of ice at zero degrees. And then once we have 350 grams of ice at zero degrees, we need to calculate how much heat energy needs to be extracted to change into ice at negative five degrees. So what I did was I tried to calculate the heat energy that needs to be extracted. So you see from 25 degrees Celsius to zero degree, I used the formula. I got this much. So this is for this part. Then heat extracted from water at zero degree to ice at zero degree. So for this part, I got 115500. Then for zero degree ice to negative five degree ice, I used the formula MC delta T. So I got three, six, seven, five joules. So total heat energy extracted is the heat energy extracted here, plus the heat energy extracted here, plus the heat energy extracted here. And you add them. And once you have got the total heat energy extracted, you divide them by the power and the power is 86 watt and that will give you the time. So that gives you 1800 that gives you approximately 1800 seconds. So it is 1813 seconds. And the answer, if you round it to uh, two significant digits, it will be 1800 seconds.